Good morning. Marvin Sylvester here. So where am I today? Today I'm actually in Chagaramas, Trinidad and Tobago. This is in now in the northern part of Trinidad. Um, I'm here inside Tucker Valley Road. Um, lots of places inside here you have you pick popular food place. There's a shooting range. There's all the way down to the end. There's a beach called Macrip. So now nice beautiful place. As you can see the weather here is a bit overcast but fortunately it's not raining. So um, I could go straight into the news today. So what am I going to cover? Today I'm going to cover um, several things. Um, a lot of them connected to the Trinidad and Tobago Energy Chamber Conference, the energy conference that they had this week, which ran from the 23rd to the 25th of January, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Um, a lot of things connected to that. And then another big story from a release from a media conference from the Prime Minister. So let's go straight into it. So first piece of news I want to cover today is from a writer's article dated the 24th of the 1st 2023 exclusive US issues license to Trinidad and Tobago to develop Venezuela offshore gas field it's an article by Matt Spet Spetalek and Curtis Williams and Mariana Paraga and let's get into it so it says the Biden administration has granted a license to Trinidad and Tobago to develop a major gas field located in Venezuelan territorial waters US and Trinidad officials said on Tuesday marking a further easing of some sanctions on Venezuela now this was a very big announcement when it came out and I am, um, how to put it, overly cautiously optimistic. I'm very cautiously optimistic about this news. And as we go in into it, you'll see why. I'm going to connect it to a couple other stories and we'll, 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 we'll build this thing from, you know, based on my views and opinions. So... The license issued by the U.S. Treasury Department at Trinidad's request and intended to enhance Caribbean regional energy security means the island nation can do business related to the Dragon gas field with Venezuela's heavily sanctioned state-run oil company, PDVSA. So, this Dragon field is to the northwest of Trinidad. It's mostly, it, well, it's offshore it's mostly in venezuelan waters but this license allows us to interact with venezuela to develop it the prime minister keith rowley speaking at a news conference in port of spain said trinidad expects to gain access to 350 million cubic feet of gas per day from the dragon field so 350 million cubic feet per day but it they didn't exactly say for how long in terms of time how you know how much years or how much we expect um that would have helped me to guess a little bit as to the actual size of this field but um i'm guessing in time we'll get that info he said he applied well continuing article he said he applied for the license in mid 2022 and won approval after discussing it with top u.s officials including u.s president joe biden while also keeping an open, open channel of communication with Venezuelan President Nicolas Maduro. So to me, on the surface, this is very good news. It's very good news for a few reasons. The first reason is that it shows that diplomacy is not dead. Um, there's a lot of things happening in the world and th this is definitely showing that between different countries, Trinidad, Venezuela, um the united states you have that dynamic between 
you know, Kamala Harris, the v Vice President, United States President, the Duro Prime Minister Rowley, um, the, 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 the wheels of diplomacy was turning there. Another positive coming out of this is that, um, as I would have mentioned in a, one of my videos two weeks ago, um, where I mentioned the Woodside Calypso project, and that was due to coming into sh on stream somewhere around 2022. And I was like, you know, this is good news. So this is also good news, you know, it's also good news. As I said, when we see articles like this, we need to cover it because we really do need the gas, right? And I would have also mentioned that we were not producing as much as we could. So I've read, you know, some people have pointed out the statistic that Atlantic LNG, which is the organization that processes LNG here in Trinidad, they supposedly have a total processing capacity of 4.2 billion cubic feet per day but right now we're using just under 3 billion cubic feet per day and i saw somewhere else in another article where it was saying approximately 2.9 billion right so there's a difference of what 1.3 billion so this news obviously is good news because it's going to help us to plug that gap in terms of um us getting closer to our maximum producing capacity at Atlantic right but as I go further into this writer's article we're going to see several other key factors that I consider to be make or break factors that will impact this project and and I, I think there's it's very important to mention them and to highlight them so if we go further down into the article, there's a part in it where it says a senior US official speaking to Reuters on condition of anonymity said the Maduro regime will not be permitted to receive any cash payments from this project and all remaining US sanctions would be unchanged and enforced. So what does that tell us? We have this project where the gas is mostly located on the Venezuelan side, on the Venezuelan border. It's being allowed to go forward, but Venezuela not making any money out of it. I think that is something that's a, a, a very key point, right? We need to keep our eye on that because who does something for free in, 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 in these kind of big things, right? you know, especially where the gas is coming from their border. Continuing on in the article, it says the license will allow PDVSA, Venezuelan authorities, Shell and Trinidad to jointly plan and develop a gas exporting project after agreeing to pending details in coming days. So that's gonna, the license has been granted, but there's still some more details to be ironed out with the US, right? Also, continuing, a portion of the resulting gas must be exported to Jamaica and the Dominican Republic right? according to the two-year license terms Rowley said so two key important things here you have some of the gas to be exported to Jamaica and Dominican Republic we're not sure how much how will that impact us here in Trinidad Yes, some have to be exported, but I'm pretty sure, you know, a lot of people would be looking forward to some of that gas being used here in our industrial sector for places like Point Lisas and the, 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 a lot of the downstream companies here in Trinidad. And then, a very important point to note, this is a two-year license. I'm going to come back to that. So continuing the article, another key point I noticed was it says, even with Washington's granting of Trinidad's request, it could take years of investment and effort to bring Venezuelan gas to Trinidad and boost LNG exports. Very important. It says it could take years. We're going to come back to that. And, and the last point that I want to point out from that article is, in addition, 
with no payments authorized to Venezuela, it could be difficult for Trinidad to craft a deal with Caracas. Go back to the point I was making there, so no money, no Venezuela not supposed to get nothing out of this and I doubt Trinidad would break those sanctions and, and, and face secondary sanctions or whatever it is to, to, to engage in such a thing. So how this going to work? But I'm going to come back to all of this, right? Because on the surface, as I said, this announcement is very, very good news, but I am cautiously optimistic about it because it still have a lot of open-ended questions right and i want to go back to that that um two-year license thing at some point I, 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 it's gonna lead into this new article that i'm gonna cover here so this article is I saw it on Natural Gas World, but I believe it's connected to Reuters from an article done by Chris Curtis Williams, dated 24th, 1st of 2023, right? The name of the article is Trinidad's Gas Output Rise Hinges on Offshore Project Approvals from Reistad. So Reistad is a consulting company, right? So let's go in into this article right it says Trinidad and Tobago's natural gas production could rebound and hit almost 4 billion cubic feet per day which is the maximum capacity which is close to the maximum capacity we just said 4.2 right per day by 2030 remember that date 2030 if key offshore projects move ahead soon Consultancy Reistad Energy said on Tuesday. Trinidad is Latin America's largest exporter of natural gas, liquefied natural gas LNG, with the capacity to process 4.2 billion cubic feet into LNG, petrochemicals, and power. But its gas production is about 2.9 billion. So here we see it again, right? 2.9 billion. Deep water gas projects, Calypso, operated by Woodside Energy. A manatee by Shell could reinvigorate the Caribbean country's output, according to consultants Reistad Energy. Both projects are awaited financial investment decisions. Now, this is very important based on my layman's understanding of things. One, Calypso Deepwater, if, if you remember from one of my last videos i would have said i think it was like 217 kilometers offshore east of trinidad so let's just kind of picture where these projects are you have dragon which is northwest of trinidad you have calypso and and, and dragon is with shell you have calypso which is woodside energy 217 kilometers east more or less kind of centrally east of Trinidad based on my understanding I could be I could be wrong and then you have the manatee field which is managed which is crucial again which is to the southeast of Trinidad as far as I understand and manatee and calypso weighted financial investment decisions and I'm also quite confident that Dragon is awaiting financial investment decision um, before anything could happen. And if, if anybody's watching and they're not too sure what the financial investment decision is, that's just basically when these big um, oil companies, before they actually decide to proceed with any project, they have something called a fit of financial investment decision, which is like the, from my understanding, the last phase before they actually give the go ahead to move forward with any particular major project so i'll continue in the article here energy companies have discovered abundant deep water resources but have been unable to replicate that success on the continental shelf said reister senior vice president um parker at trinidad's energy conference 2023 so we see connected to conference right gas reserves at the manatee field were first discovered back in 2005 but lack an agreement for joint development with venezuela 
where the majority of the shared reservoir is located has delayed the project i also want to believe is not just the agreements between trinidad and venezuela but is it possible that the sanctions also had a part to play in this that would have you know held things back a bit and it's possible that trinidad and tobago would need to get a separate license from the u.s treasury department to develop manatee my assumption i think that might be the case right and then the article article also goes on parker said production day is unlikely to be available for 2028 it's five years from now right before 2028 so i guess then technically it could be after 2028 he urged Trinidad's government to ensure that Woodside's Calypso will be green-lighted, right? Also indicated um, improved fiscal terms, better domestic pricing policies, increased foreign participation, and streamlining approvals might help. So, I just want to touch on that, how it's kind of connected. In my last video, I would have indicated that they're supposed to have, it, it, it's rumored that it's going to have another set of um auctions for offshore blocks um oil and gas blocks and um be supposed to be seeing improved um fiscal terms where um whatever royalties or taxes and whatnot supposed to be amended and they're supposed to potentially only um tax the profits to lure more invest investors maybe i connect any wrong dots but could could that also be a part of it to try to help push these companies to make the investment woodside and new ones right better domestic policies prices streamline approval might help right woodside recently said its calypso field has recoverable reserves of over 3.4 trillion cubic feet while manatee has 2.7 trillion cubic feet of proven gas reserves on trinidad side Conflicts in Europe that are reshaping consumption and tight energy supplies suggest here there will be a significant gap between global energy demand and production, so new sources will be needed which could provide opportunities for Trinidad's LNG. So, this, this, this is facts. These are facts. We need the gas. We need to lure the investors here to help develop the gas fields. But, I want to go back to some dates because for me as a layman I also trying to understand exactly when this thing going to really kick off right when when we're gonna actually start to see the benefits of all these projects the the gas and all these things really coming into play so we already know from the first article that I covered that the, the writer's article that we have a two-year license, right? We got a two-year license. So that expires in 2005 for Dragon. We know from an article where I read in Intelli Energy Intelligence two weeks ago, the Calypso should come on stream sometime in 2027 approximately four years from now and we in the article that i just covered as well we see that manatee supposed to come on from 2028 five years from now so this makes me con you know in my little simple mind try to think when is dragon really going to come on stream and I hear in dates like 2030, you know, where we could potentially hit the 4 billion. I hear in 2027, Woodside, um, Calypso, 2028, Shell, Manatee. So when, and, and a two-year license for Dragon, but so, so when we think about it, when do we realistically think we could get the first set of gas coming from Dragon? And that... In doing my little reading, I, I, I came across this article, a Newsday article dated 27 1st, 2023. Energy Minister Kevin Ramnarine clueless about Dragon Deal. 
the article by Ryan Hamilton Davis. Let's go in into it a bit, right? So it says, Responding to former Energy Minister Kevin Ramnerain saying the reviewed drug on gas deal may take as much as four years before gas arrives in Trinidad and Tobago, Energy Minister Stuart Young said Ramnerain knows nothing about the issue. Kevin Ramnerain is a field minister of energy, Young said. This is from the article, right? His mismanagement of the country's nine billion oh sorry, his mismanagement of the country's gas sector left NGC with over nine billion in claims. He never negotiated a gas supply contract and left NGC rolling month to month contracts with off takers. This is what you know, being quoted in the article. Right? He has no clue about the dragon and its development and certainly is not an authority on how it will be produced. It is premature at this time to state timelines. Premature to state timelines. Okay. Right? Safe to say that the granting of the OFAC license is monumental and a great for Trinidad and Tobago. As we can provide more specifics, we will. Young was responding to questions coming out of Ramnaran's statements in Thursday's news day. Saying, TNT, Trinidad and Tobago may have to wait three to four years before gas is received from Dragon Field. Ram Narayan opined, a lot still has to be done before gas gets flowing. One is the, com and this is where they quote him saying, one is the commercial arrangement between Shell, the National Gas Company, NGC, and the Venezuelan government. That in itself will take time to negotiate. He added that getting a project to a final investment decision, which is from Shell, you just mentioned, is also time consuming and could take years to complete. Now, this, this is just my thoughts. I'm not saying who's right, who's wrong. I might be collecting completely incorrect that's that I'm not supposed to connect, right? Not saying who's right or who's wrong. Just my personal thoughts. Now, I understand Mr. Ramnarain is an ex opposition minister. And at times in certain articles, he's been very critical of the current administration. I know that. I also understand that Mr. Young, for what I want to believe political reasons, will have to defend the news that the Prime Minister has given. If the Prime Minister come out and give news, see, Dragon is on. He's the energy minister, obviously, he had to run out and defend it. Let me be real, right? Yeah, 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 you had to show, you had to show a movement. You know, I, I wouldn't be surprised. I might not do the same thing saying, hey, listen, it's we inside here. Kevin outside here. What he talking about? He don't know what it is we doing. He don't know what is he seeing on the inside here. Right? He's not an authority on this. He never negotiate or probably do anything like this. So how it is he could just be coming and saying timelines and all these different kind of things. I understand. I understand but in this instance I have to agree that Mr. Ramnaran is making a very valid point I have to I, I, I'm very inclined to believe that he's making a very valid point the reality is it will take time it will take time to iron out the final details with the US which still have to be dealt with I agree it will take time to iron out things in whatever tripartite discussions between Trinidad, Shell and Venezuela. I agree it will take time as well for Shell to come to their financial investment decision, their fit. And I think that's the most important part of this whole thing here because in my simple of mine nothing could go ahead unless shell comes to that fit because you can make how much agreements you could come to how much conclusions if shell says listen we're not doing anything with this how, how we're going to develop and i try I, I really try to find the article now, now there was an article i saw in in passing and reading where it was saying a lot of these oil and gas companies and energy companies they kind of i don't want to use the wrong adjective but 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 the, the impression i got from the article is that a lot of these energy companies 
a little hesitant to make feds right now why the article didn't go into too much detail but a, 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 a lot of companies for whatever reasons they have they're not rushing into any financial investment decisions maybe based on global current affairs but I don't really want to speculate too much because I don't know I don't know right again I could be connecting completely wrong that's but but if what I believe is correct if Mr. Ramnarain is correct the reality is pragmatic thinking would say this looking at 2027 Calypso potentially 2028 Manatee it's probably going to take about a four years before we get any gas coming from from Dragon and I'm not saying that to pour cold water and anything that the minister has said I, I, it's just my layman thinking and again enough information was not provided at the conference and all these different things for us to really make a fully informed decision we still waited to get more information so in my view my simple humble view uh, I lean in towards Mr. what Mr. Amnerina said but but I hope to be proven wrong we have a two-year license and I, I, I don't see the project coming on stream within two years but I hope to be proven wrong I hope to see this project come on come online in less than four years because as I said the other projects are all the way off you have a 1.3 billion cubic gas deficit in terms of production and we really need the gas so let's not belabor that too much anymore move on to the last and final article that I have to cover today right so this one is an article from the Guyana newsroom dated 23 1st 2023 it's titled let's move together Trinidad eyes natural gas from Guyana and other Caribbean nations right it's an article by the Shani Ragubir let's get into it I, I, I want to read the whole thing a new partnership among Trinidad and Tobago Guyana and other gas producing nations in the southern Caribbean could help meet the region's energy needs the twin islands energy minister Stuart young said on monday minister young speaking at an opening discussion at trying to biggest energy conference you see energy conference again right emphasized that his country is uniquely positioned both geographically and institutionally to help countries exploit their natural gas resources according to him Proven reserves offshore Guyana and Suriname, coupled with possible finds of Barbados and Grenada, can be integrated into existing Trinidad's gas production. That is Atlantic LNG, right? And Young reminded that gathering reminded the gathering that Trinidad and Tobago has been involved in natural gas production for years, making it the most experienced player in the Caribbean. That is facts, right? The regional play that can take place as we link hands with Suriname, Guyana, Barbados, Grenada and bring gas to Trinidad and Tobago into our infrastructure that is something that doesn't exist anywhere else in the world he highlighted. For more than 100 years Trinidad and Tobago has been involved in the petrochemical sector. In the early 1990s the country's economy became more heavily focused on natural gas. To date, the production of natural gas associated and associated products is a central part of the country's economy. And the energy minister asks, can you imagine the energy security and the sustainability for the region that we can bring if we push in the right direction moving together? I agree. Makes sense to me. This is not the first time such an alliance has been proposed. Last year at Suriname's Energy Conference, Guyana President Dr. Ufan Ali also made similar comments and then if you remember in my last video I would have mentioned that the President Ali was supposed to be at all conferences here he was 
and he made this further statement with the energy security of this region i once again reinforce the call that every country in the region with potential for natural gas should be allowed to explore that potential to the fullest i i, I like to hear these kind of things because it, it 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 makes me feel that you know this this is all connected it's it's all it's it's something coming together that could be really great for us because remember in my last posting last week one of my videos um i would have indicated that the guyana and suriname um energy business chambers would have signed an mou to do more business in the future which i said was an excellent sign you have the trent tobago energy minister talking about what I want to believe is to make Trinidad a sort of gas hub. You have all these different countries feeding gas into Atlantic, you know, and, 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 and each Caribbean country reaping the benefits to help their industrialization, their exporting goals, their probably climate energy goals, because as we know, if they utilize more natural gas locally, there's more clean energy, right? Um, you have the Guyana president talking about enforcing energy security, right? And my assumption here is that, again, you have that possibility of some of Guyana's gas coming to Trinidad for processing and export, right? Once the commercial, whatever is in place. And again, we have Dragon, we have... Uh, manatee, Calypso, all these different things. So, to me, it, it, it feels a little connected. It feels good. It, 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 it feels very promising. I feel optimistic when I hear all these things happening together. And again, I really believe it's for the better of all Caribbean countries. I really hope that the majority of our natural gas that is found there in the Caribbean is first and foremost, I am saying it, this is just my thought, is first and foremost used for the development of Caribbean countries. We all understand what's going on in the world. We all understand where certain countries need gas for whatever reasons, but I personally want to see us use all gas use our reserves primarily for the development of Caribbean countries. So that's my last article here. That's me for today. Um, if you've watched the entire thing, thank you very much. Um, what I'm planning to do is to bust this video up into smaller pieces, but I'll also have I'll probably have this one big piece. Apologies for the wind in the background. And again, if you like this video and you like what you've seen, please like, share, subscribe, hit the notification button so that when I put my videos out, you can see them. And if you really like what it is you see here, I will have ways in the description that you could provide support to my channel. So that we could grow this thing into what it is I know it can be. Again, thank you very much. Have a great day. And have a wonderful blessed week ahead. Take care. Bye.